Hello there. I don't know if you've been like me recently, but I've been searching the internet to find out information concerning Nibiru and Planet X. Because I thought maybe this had got something to do with the trials and troubles that are revealed in the book of Revelation. I came across some videos that were teaching that there is going to be a planetary configuration on the 23rd of September 2017 which would fit exactly with what is written in Revelation chapter 12. And they were saying that the church would be raptured on that day. Now I believe this is wrong. I don't believe the church could possibly be raptured on the 23rd of September 2017. But before I tell you why, I want to take you to the scripture and read what it says and then explain to you what people are saying about it. So let's go to Revelation chapter 12. Verse 1 And a great sign was seen in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, and the moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of twelve stars. And she, being with child, cried, being in labour and in pain, to give birth. And another sign was seen in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew a third of the stars of heaven, and cast them onto the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, who was ready to give birth, to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a son, who was about to shepherd all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up to God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she has a place prepared by God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and sixty days. Now that's the scripture that they're using. And I'd like to show you what they've said about the configuration of these planets. So I'll show you some diagrams and explain to you what they've said about them. This first picture is showing you um, the two constellations that are going to be overhead at Jerusalem, they say on the 23rd of September 2017. If we remove the pictures and show you a configuration of the stars that are in place, it will make it a little bit clearer for you. So here is the second picture. This shows you the positions of the stars which are joined up by blue lines to make the two configurations, the constellation of Leo on the right and Virgo on the left. I'll show you a different diagram which will be a little bit clearer to help to explain it to you. This is the constellation of Leo. It has nine stars in it. This is not the twelve stars that cover the crown uh, of the Virgin, but there are three planets also said to be in Leo at that time. They are Venus, Mars and Mercury. And these three added to the nine stars in Leo are said to be the twelve stars uh, over the head of the Virgin. This is the constellation of Virgo. She is said to be clothed with the sun, so they put the position about the side of her head or her shoulder. This is where they say Jupiter is. They say that in the previous nine months, this planet has been going backwards and forwards inside this area here, which they call the womb of the woman. And they say that it comes out on the 23rd of September 2017. This is where they say the moon is at her feet, as it says in Revelation 12. Most people are saying that this sign has never happened before in all history. One person said that he thought it happened in the days of Adam and Eve, uh, but they also say it's not going to happen again. So this is the only opportunity, they say, for this thing to happen. The only one. 
Now, if you look for the planet positions on the 23rd of September 2017 in an ephemeris, uh, please make sure you do not use an astrological ephemeris. There is a difference between the ephemeris used by astrologers and ephemeris used by astronomers. And the difference is almost one month out. So the one that's accurate is the astronomy one and the astrology one is not accurate. And if you try to predict the positions of the planets with an ephemeris from an astrology point of view, you'll find they are far different to this. So what's wrong with what they have said? Uh, their prediction in many of these videos has been that the rapture of the church will take place on that day, the 23rd of September 2017. Now this seems wrong to me, but let's look at what the scripture actually said in Revelation 12:5 again. And she brought forth a son who is about to shepherd all nations with a rod of iron and her child was caught up to God and to his throne. Now that's the scripture, and the child being caught up to God is what they say is the rapture of the church. So what's wrong with it? First of all, this is a wrong method of interpretation. If you want to know how to interpret prophecy and the end time, Start with 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 20. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of its own interpretation. For prophecy was not brought in all time by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke what was brought by the Holy Spirit. Now this scripture says that prophecy is not of its own interpretation which means it should not be interpreted by itself. The scripture says that uh, things should be out of the mouth of two or three witnesses. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 9, the Apostle Paul said, We know in part and we prophesy in part. So each prophet gave a part. And if you want to get the correct understanding, you have to take the parts and you have to put them together like the pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. Then you need to meditate them so that you can get the understanding that God wants you to have. If you're looking at the end time, you've got to look at so many different places. You've got to look at Revelation. You've got to look at Daniel. You've got to look at Isaiah. Ezekiel, Zechariah, Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, First and Second Thessalonians, the book of Jude, Second Peter chapter 3, and lots of other places in order to put these things together to find out exactly what the true situation is. Now concerning the rapture of the church, they're not doing that. They're making a prediction based solely and utterly the date that it's going to happen on one scripture in Revelation 12. And for that reason, I don't believe it's going to happen. Secondly, they're adding a lot to what God's word says. Uh, Deuteronomy 4.2, Deuteronomy 12.32, Proverbs 30 verse 5 to 6, they all tell you not to add to God's word. And the penalty for doing it, you may be found a liar. And particularly to do with the book of Revelation, uh, the last chapter, chapter 22, verse 18, gives you a warning there. For I testify to every man who hears the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add to these things, God shall add to him the plagues that are written in this book. Now that is a very serious penalty. 
and it's better to say too little than to say too much because when you're making uh, predictions about what's going to happen and when it's going to happen in Revelation there's a very large chance you could be wrong if you don't have the correct information. Let me give you a couple of examples of where they are adding to God's Word. Number one, nowhere in Scripture does it say that Jupiter is a type of the Messiah. Nowhere does it say that the woman in Revelation chapter 12 is the constellation of Virgo. Now these are just a couple of examples, but you can probably find a lot more. Thirdly, I believe that the timing that they are looking at is wrong. There's a difference between a type and a spiritual fulfillment. These things can be very far apart. For example, in the Old Testament, you have types of Jesus Christ in the animal sacrifices that were made under the law. But the spiritual fulfillment of it did not take place at that time. It came up to 2,000 years later. And what they're saying is when the physical reality of planets lining up like they say uh, is going to be the actual fulfillment of it. And it's not necessarily true that it's going to be that way. Now in Revelation 6 verse 8, we have the fourth seal, where it says that a quarter of the population of the earth is going to be destroyed. At present time, I would think that is probably just under 2 billion people. Now that certainly hasn't happened in my lifetime. I did check the figures for World War II, but they were nowhere near a quarter of the population of the Earth being killed there. I checked the figures for World War I, same result, nowhere near a quarter of the population being killed there. Before that, in the time of sailing ships and no airplanes, no weapons of mass destruction, I would think it's highly unlikely there's ever been a war that could kill off this many people since the time of the Apostle John. In Revelation chapter 6 verse 9 to 11 we have the fifth seal and the fifth seal contains the martyrs of the church. It's people who are being killed for their witness for Jesus Christ and I don't believe that that's happened yet either. Here in UK, where I live, we're still free to go out and preach the gospel in the street. Uh, we're not being killed for our witness. Uh, some people don't like us. The police get a little bit antagonized with us sometimes, but they can't even arrest us because we've still got freedom of speech in this country. And I think it's probably the same in a vast majority of countries. A mass persecution of the church, like I think is referred to, in, in uh, Revelation chapter 6, verse 9 to 11, the fifth seal, I don't believe that's happened yet. But go and take a look at the sixth seal. And this is in Revelation chapter 6, verse 12 to 13. And I looked when he had opened the sixth seal, and behold, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair. And the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell to the earth, even as a fig tree cast her untimely figs, when she's shaken by a strong wind. Now that looks to me very similar to what we read earlier in Revelation chapter 12 verse 4. So let me remind you, Revelation 12:4. And his tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and cast them onto the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was born. Now those scriptures, both of them refer to the stars of heaven being cast down onto the earth. So let's go and look 
at a third witness where it talks about the stars of heaven being cast down onto the earth because it looks like Revelation 12 and the sixth seal are going to be put together. So go to Matthew chapter 24 verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. Now there are three things in that scripture which line up with what we read in Revelation chapter 6 verse 12 to 13. The sun being darkened, the moon not giving her light, and the stars of heaven falling. So this I would look at as being a parallel. Now, Let's ask, when did that happen? It tells you in the same verse, after the tribulation, immediately after the tribulation. Just like the sixth seal comes after the fifth, which is persecution of the church, this particular verse here is telling us that this is going to happen after the tribulation. So I would line up the tribulation with this, with the fifth seal, which is the church being persecuted. So let's carry on reading. 24 verse 30. And the sign of the Son of Man shall appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth shall mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. That is the rapture, the gathering together of the elect by the angels at the second coming of Jesus Christ after the tribulation. Now if you want more scripture to back it up, you can go to Mark chapter 13, verse 24 to 27, and it'll tell you the same thing. Let me give you one more point before we leave this section. In Matthew 24, verse 36, it says, Concerning that day and hour, no man knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Jesus said, Nobody knows the day. But these people who are making these videos are saying they know the day and they are actually making it the 23rd of September 2017. And this is another reason why I think their prophecy is false. Jesus said we wouldn't know the day. So let's take a look at another scripture. Revelation Chapter 19, verse 7. We should rejoice and be glad and give glory to him, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife has made herself ready. Now, the wife of the Lamb is exactly the same as the bride of Christ. And the bride of Christ is the church. And it says in this scripture that she has made herself ready. So let me ask you the question. Look around. Is the church ready for the rapture? We've got one believing in the doctrine of the Trinity. We've got one believing in oneness of God. We've got one believing in baptism in the name of Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Another one believing in baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We've got some churches keeping Sabbath day. We've got some churches keeping Sunday. We've got some who speak in tongues. We've got some who don't. We've got some who believe the lake of fire is annihilation. We've got others who believe it's eternal punishment. We've got some who believe that when a person dies, they just go to sleep and they don't exist till the resurrection. And we've got others believe that they go to heaven or hell. So ask yourself, is this the church that's made itself ready for the coming of Jesus? My answer would be no. Go to John chapter 17 
and look what Jesus prayed for us. Verse 20, And I do not ask for these only, that's his disciples, but also for those who shall believe in me through their word, that's us, that they all may be one, as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. Now can you see all the church that Jesus would come back for being one, like Jesus and the Father are one? Is there any difference in doctrine between Jesus and the Father? The answer is no. So we're not like that. The churches are not like that. So the churches are not one together like they should be. So let's go and take a look at the next verse, which is verse 8. And to her it was given that she should be clothed in fine linen, clean and bright, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. Now that sounds to me very similar to something that is comes under the fifth seal in Revelation chapter 6 verse 11. So let's take a look at that. And white robes were given to each of them, and it was said to them that they should rest for a little time until their fellow servants also and their brothers, who were about to be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. Now these people who were killed during the tribulation period, these are given the white robes, and these in Revelation 19.8 that we just read about, these are dressed in the same robes, clean and white. So they are all part of the same church, the bride of Christ, the Lamb's wife. Look at the next verse in Revelation chapter 19. Verse 9, And he says to me, Right, blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he says to me, these words of God are true. Now, if you look at Matthew chapter 25, verse 1 to 13, you can read a parable about ten virgins. They were waiting for the second coming of their Lord. Five were wise and five were foolish. The wise ones had made themselves ready. The foolish ones didn't, and they didn't get in. But the wise ones, where did they go? They went up to the marriage supper of the Lamb. So the marriage supper of the Lamb starts here in Revelation chapter 19 at the second coming of Jesus Christ. It does not happen seven years before this, which some people teach. This is going to happen when Jesus returns at the end of this age. But when he does come back, he's coming back for a glorious church without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but one that is holy and without blemish. This is what he says in Ephesians 5.27. So let's go and take a look at another scripture. Look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1. Now we entreat you, brothers, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, for you not to be shaken in mind or troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter, as from us, as though the day of Christ had come. Now our gathering together to him is the rapture of the church. And don't be confused by people who say the day of Christ is not the same as the day of the Lord. It is the same day. Take a look at the references to this particular day. How many different ways God says the same thing. The day, Hebrews 10.25 
that day, 2 Timothy 4, 8, Matthew 24, 36, the day of Christ, Philippians 1, 10 and 2, 16, the day of Jesus Christ, Philippians 1, 6, the day of the Lord, 1 Thessalonians 5, 2, 2 Peter 3, 10, the day of the Lord Jesus, 1 Corinthians 5, 5, 2 Corinthians 1, 14, the day of our Lord Jesus Christ, 1 Corinthians 1, 8, the day of God, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 12. Now all of these are referring to the same day, which is the day Jesus returns and the day that the church will be raptured. You don't have eight different days here. So let's continue reading. 2 Thessalonians 2, 3 Let no man deceive you in any way, for that day shall not come, except the apostasy shall come first, and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself over everything that is called God, or that is worshipped, so as for him to sit in the temple of God, as God, showing himself that he is God. Now this man of sin is the Antichrist. And I'm talking to you today, this is August 2017, and I don't know who the Antichrist is. As far as I'm concerned, nobody else knows either. But if this rapture of the church is going to take place on the 23rd of September 2017, uh, we've just read that the Antichrist has got to come first. So where is he? He's not here. And I don't think he's going to appear before that date either. So this is another reason why I believe this rapture on second, on 23rd of September 2017 is false. Let me give you one last scripture on it. Go to Revelation chapter 20 verse 4. And I saw thrones and they sat on them and judgment was given to them and I saw the souls of those who were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God and who had not worshipped the beast nor his image nor had received his mark upon their foreheads or on their hand and they lived and reigned with Christ the thousand years. But the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Now if the first resurrection takes place here in Revelation 20, uh, it's not going to be Revelation 12. If the scripture we read in Revelation 12 refers to the rapture of the church, then this scripture is telling you when it's going to happen. It's going to be after the tribulation. It's going to be when people have made their stand against the mark of the beast and they've not worshipped his image. This is going to be after the Antichrist has appeared. This is when the rapture of the church is going to come. It's not going to come before that. 1 Thessalonians 4.16 tells you that the dead in Christ shall rise first. That is the first resurrection. When are the dead in Christ going to rise? We just read it. The first resurrection is after the tribulation, after the Antichrist has come and people have died in that time. And those are some of my reasons for believing that the rapture of the church will not take place on the 23rd of September 2017. Whether you believe me or not is up to you. But I can only warn you not to follow false teachers who make these predictions in a non-scriptural way. Because the scripture says, take heed that no man deceives you. It also says, many false prophets shall arise and deceive many. And in Matthew 15, verse 14, 
It says, if the blind lead the blind, both will fall into the ditch. So you will end up in the same ditch that they're ending up in. So I ask you, please, don't do it. Study yourself to show yourself approved unto God. Get into the scriptures and put your life right with God so you can understand the truth. To those people who are teaching this false doctrine, I would say this. It's very easy to be deceived. I know because I've been deceived myself in the past. But thank God he's revealed my errors to me one by one and I've put things right. But I've watched a lot of your videos and some of you seem to have a really good heart to serve God and find out the truth. But you do have to forsake the false methods of interpretation that people are following. And unfortunately, when this day comes, the 23rd of September, and the church is not raptured, uh, you will be proven a liar for saying it was going to happen. Revelation 21 verse 8 But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and fornicators and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone which is the second death. So when this rapture that you are predicting does not happen you will need to repent to get into the kingdom of God. And if you do it, God will be happy to let you in because he's very forgiving, just like he was with the Apostle Peter who denied Jesus three times just before he was crucified. But you will also have to forsake these false methods of interpretation if you try to get the truth out of the word of God. So please do it. And now I speak to everybody. I am not making any predictions concerning the rapture of the church set in dates. I'm not making any predictions concerning the second Jesus, coming of Jesus Christ set in dates for that. I'm not making any predictions concerning the Biru or Planet X. All I am saying to you is the rapture of the church will not take place on the 23rd of September 2017. Definitely not. And that's it. So thank you for watching this video. I do hope that you've got something out of it. And if you have, please give God all the glory. Spread it around through the social media. And God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Click center to subscribe to Logos Apostolic Bible College. Click top right to see more videos. Go also to our website and see some great Bible studies, Greek and Hebrew word studies and lots more. And God bless you.